Welcome to Cody, Wyoming, this town of just over 10,000 people at about 5,000 feet elevation or loud vehicles about 13 or 1400 meters is a great tourist destination. Besides Jackson Hole, Cody is one of the most popular tourist towns in all of Wyoming. Located on the east area of Yellowstone, this is a perfect jumping off point for tours, whitewater rafting, animal sightseeing, and just general shopping, as well as the Buffalo Bill Center. This is a major stop all along Northwest Wyoming because it's pretty accessible. The prices are somewhat reasonable for hotels and it's a fun place to visit. I'm going to tour you around Cody to give you an idea of what this is like and stop in a shop and talk to a shop owner of what it's like to be in Wyoming and in Cody. Nothing like a fly shop, a kitsch gift shop, and a saddlery to get your west on, your fishing on, and your t-shirt from the location. Cody has plenty of entertainment options, including the dinner and a show at the Cody Cattle. If you ever wanted to go get your Wild West on and have a good grub for dinner, this is a place to check out. One nice thing about Cody is the Cody Trolley Tours. Like many other cities, they have an old school looking trolley that drives you around and gives you a tour of the city. Like a lot of other good American Western towns, they've got the flags on the street. They're actually posts that are dedicated just to this. It's a real fun Americana experience in Cody, Wyoming. Nothing like a fly shop, a kitsch gift shop, and a saddlery to get your west on, your fishing on, and your t-shirt from the location. Cody also has a lot of art shops, including the Timur or Timur Gallery, sorry if I pronounced it wrong, fine art and gifts, beautiful posters, artwork, all sorts of fun stuff, even scarves over there. That's a nice thing about Cody. One, the street's actually wider, so you get a lot more traffic flow because this is on the east side of Yellowstone. And two, it actually seems like there's quite a few shops here that uh, I would say rivals Jackson, if not does better. So. We're going to continue touring through and giving a taste of what Cody is like. The Cody Steakhouse is one of the popular places for steaks, ribs, and seafood for good eating in Cody. And if the kids are driving you nuts, you can always buy them candy at Cowtown Candy Company, the Utter Candy Store. But of course, if you get them that candy, then they're gonna drive you more nuts. Always fun. If you like those old fashioned photos, the Way Back When Photography Shop is a great place to come and get your cowboy on. The Yellowstone Out West Company has no lack of Cody, Yellowstone, Wyoming, and National Park shirts for you to get your t-shirt on. They also have some of the humor shirts. Don't puff the fluff, pet the fluffy cows, fan idiots not guns, believe in Bigfoot, and whatever else that might make you happy. If you want a pretty trippy museum, the Cody Dug Up Gun Museum is for you. This museum is dedicated to guns that have been dug up out of the dirt, found in old mining camps or wherever. So everything there is rusty and crinkled, but it gives you a good idea and the collection's pretty extensive of the different firearms that have been used all throughout the area and wherever the collection might be updated from. Stop by the Cody Stampede on 12th Street where you can get your tickets to the world famous rodeo that's been going on for over a hundred years. This was originally started, I believe, with Buffalo Bill, and the tradition continues on today. This makes Cody the rodeo capital of the world. That's a pretty big thing, considering that Sheridan has a massive rodeo, Jackson has almost nightly rodeos, and there are other rodeos around the West. But Cody, it definitely claims itself as the rodeo capital of the West, yes. Well worth considering to check this out 
Tickets are available, pop on in. It's super fun, almost nightly entertainment. There are lots of opportunities for some good grub all around Cody. Buffalo Bill spent $80,000 in 1902 to build the Irma Hotel, Buffalo Bill's original hotel. It's been said that Buffalo Bill Cody came back to his hotel often to enjoy and recoup as he traveled the world with his famous rodeo show. You can even hang out at the statue of Buffalo Bill and get your photo and selfie on. The office of Bill Cody, 1913 to 1992 when it was retired. If you enjoy mounts, you can see Colonel Cody's Wild West Emporium all throughout the hotel. A spectacular collection of mounts, many from the 70s. Running around Cody is good fun, but also, if you happen to be a fiber arts person, the sun's gonna be blinding here, there is a new shop, Wyoming Yarn and Fiber. It's owned by Carista. She's a really neat designer. She hand dyes her own yarn. I'm gonna pop into the store and hopefully she's not tied up with customers selling. I'll uh, have her talk a little bit about the store and show you around. I'm here with Carista, owner of Wyoming Yarn and Fiber, checking out one of the local shops in Cody. It's really fun and adventurous to check this out. So if you're into fiber, crochet, knitting, and everything, let's ask her about her shop. Welcome to the Wyoming Yarn and Fiber Shop. Here at Wyoming Yarn and Fiber, we specialize on focusing on local indie dyers, specifically Sweet Mountain Crafts. Sweet Mountain Crafts has an online YouTube channel at Sweet Mountain Crafts, and there I talk about projects that I personally, Carista, am working on, or also my upcoming yarn dyeing projects. So you can find me online at sweetmountaincrafts.com and also on YouTube at Sweet Mountain Crafts. If you want to see some crazy animal mounts, check out the King's Inn. This building is loaded with animals from Africa, all sorts of countries. The owner went to Africa to do some hunting, but he found that, uh, he, I guess he connected with the villages where they had some serious dangerous problem animals. They also have the Buffalo Bill Museum for the namesake, the Firearms Museum, and the Draper Natural History Museum. This is an extensive location. The price, in my estimation, is a little bit spendy, but when you're taking a big family, but for yourself, when you're coming through there, you have to stop here because the extensive collections of history and all the different artworks and pieces in here with all the wind that's gonna wipe out my microphone is unmatched. I have not seen a better museum in probably all of Wyoming than this location. It's really impressive and well worth the visit. Though it's some distance from Crow Agency, the biggest collection of teepees at their power every year, you can actually enjoy being inside of teepee well with modern fabrics and cloth, but they still have the pole. Uh, they have to have a safety thing so if it gets windy here. But there is also a chuck wagon demonstration outside where you can talk to the cookie. Boy, this museum, I love this one. It's definitely worth the opportunity to stop in, especially if you have young children or if you're a history buff. Super, super cool. Well worth the time to stop by Buffalo Bill Center. I'm here at the Cody Firearms Experience. We're gonna take you in and actually show you what it's like to shoot a Gatling gun and have Paul, the owner, tour you around. It might be a little... Okay, I'm Paul Brock. I'm general manager here at Cody Firearms Experience. We've been open six years now. 
And we tell the story of American history through the firearm and how it developed across the years. So we're unique in that in every experience that we, every experience, every package that we take out, you go with a range officer who's a certified range safety officer through the NRA at a minimum, if not an instructor, they're gonna give you some history points, show you that firearm, walk you through it with it unloaded. Then they're gonna shoot one round before you even have it in your hands. Then they're gonna let you shoot one round through that firearm and make sure that you're comfortable and safe with it. Then we'll continue on with your experience and shoot the rest of your ammunition. We have thousands of customers every year come through, have a great time from foreign uh, non-English speaking travelers to young kids to first time shooters to very experienced military and competitive shooters. So we deal with all kinds of people and all kinds of firearms. We shoot everything from early model flintlocks from Revolutionary War times all the way up to modern day and modern military rounds and firearms now. Nice. And just uh, if you wouldn't mind, just give us a quick tour of your... Uh... Your museum here, I mean, you've got an this impressive is, set of pieces. This is one of my fun walls, that, and it, we started with a timeline. We were going to do the, the, you know, every 10 years, but the firearm really changes a lot during the Civil War. But it starts here, one of my favorite stories is early America and early West, 40 million buffalo. And the European settlers come through, Native Americans displaced, the railroad comes through, the Sharps rifle comes out, the end of the wall, so this is 1790, the end of the wall is 1890. The beginning close to 40 million buffalo. Mm -hmm. By the time you get down to the 1890s, you have 541 left. Whew. Saved by Aldo Leopold, Buffalo Bill, Teddy Roosevelt, helped to gather up that last 541 and develop mm -hmm. them into the several million that we have today. But literally yeah. saved them. So, but it is the changing firearm and the efficiency of them. The early model flintlocks, 200 years, you have the flintlock rifle. And then in the early 1800s, they come out with a percussion cap. It moves to the guns of the mountain man, Jeremiah Johnson and those. Moves mm -hmm. on quickly to the Colt Walker. Uh, Colt was a sailor and designed his revolving cylinder off the big uh, three master, the big steering wheel that had the pins in it that would be able, to, be able to turn it and put that pin in. So that's where he came up with the idea. The Colt Walker was the first good firearm for Colt, and the check from the Texas Rangers gave him the money to start his factory. Okay, and uh, how much did those go for on an original now? <laughs> an original, again, only 1,100 of them produced, several hundred of them blew up because of the extreme powder charges they used, and he immediately downsized them, so there are only 1,100 Walkers produced. They are a million-dollar firearm, an existing original Colt Walker, a million dollars. Woo, yeah. Yeah. Impressive. So then they go on, the Civil War changes thing, the percussion cap comes out, and immediately they move on, to, uh, move on to full cartridge guns. The Gatling gun was actually even a piece of that development of the cartridge and the full, where we think of it before, even here they had a paper cartridge that they'd put the paper powder down in there, put a ball on top, had to put a cap on here, and the Gatling gun and the Henry were the start of the cartridge guns. Uh. And so right after the war, just by 1865 on, everything goes to cartridge. And then by 1873, we get the Colt and the Winchester, which are just the, you know, the iconic firearms of the American West. So here's another great piece of history. Why didn't Colt make rifles? Why didn't Winchester make pistols? Ooh, that's a good question. Handshake agreement. I won't compete with you if you don't compete with me. Nice. So, I mean, 1872, you couldn't do that today, but in those days, for not until World War I did Colt production start making rifles. Wow. So it uh, was past the time, and they both said, probably okay? War Production Act. Yeah. That's it. War Production Act. So, yep. Brought them into the, brought them into the rifle industry. Interesting. All righty. Thank you so much, Paul. This is a great shop and an excellent experience. Well, thank you for coming in today. We really do appreciate it. We hope to see some of your friends coming down, too. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. What we're going to experience together today is we're going to shoot the Gatlin gun. The Gatlin gun was patented on November 4th, 1862. It was invented by a gentleman with the name Dr. Richard Gatlin, thus the name the Gatlin Gun. Now, if you are a student of U.S. history, you know that in the early 1860s, we were in the middle of the Civil War. And state-of-the-art firearms at that time period were black powder firearms. 
the Union Army standard issue firearm during the Civil War was the 1861 Springfield rifle, or Springfield musket, I should say. Its ignition system was a percussion cap or a musket cap. It was black powder loaded from the muzzle, and it, the projectile that it shot was a 58 caliber Manet ball. I bring that up because when Dr. Gatlin invented the Gatlin gun, it too was a black powder firearm. But Dr. Gatlin was a pretty smart dude because he knew it didn't make sense to load six barrels from the muzzle and then come back and, and fire them. So he came up with a really cool idea. In effect, he was having the soldiers or the gun operator fire uh, or manufacture, if you will, cartridges on site. He used pieces of barrel. On this end was machined a nipple where you put a percussion cap, you put a black powder charge in it, and at the time these two were chambered for that 58 caliber Manet ball. So that's how this gun first started out. As firearm technology evolved and improved, a few years later, and I can't tell you exactly how many, then the gun was rechambered and it shot a 4570 round. The 4570 round is about that long, and it was the same ammunition that was fired from the Springfield trapdoor, which is what the U.S. Cavalry used in the Indian Wars. So, our we still use the carriers. However, ours is chambered in a 45 Colt. Same caliber, smaller cartridge. Alrighty, so that's just a little bit of history nice. about the Gatlin gun. Cool. Aaron, are you ready to experience this? Yes, sir. You, you've chosen the 20 round magazine and that's what I'm holding in my hands. Uh, you'll notice that there are 20 cartridges in there and each one of those is in the carrier like we demonstrated a little earlier. If you want to grab a hold of it, you can feel the weight. Heavy. Not nice. there. All right, go for it. And now it's time for a still pose. All right. So want to take that off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see. Yeah, whoever that was, it didn't go well. <laughs> Cody, Wyoming has a little bit of something for everyone. Whether you want to do whitewater rafting, zip line touring on a 3,250 foot zip line in the area, pretty sweet. If you want to tour Yellowstone, you can pay a private guide to tour you all around. So when you're heading back and you're super tired, it's a great way to go. You gotta come out and hang with Colonel Wild Bill. He is one of the most famous rodeo people in the world. He brought the original touring concept of the rodeo to the world. Others have done it before and others have done it since, but Wild Bill, he's the man. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Please check out links in the description to all my books, including Antarctic Tears, where I take you on a tour to the South Pole three months alone. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more info like this.